So we're kind of at that awkward stage, aren't we? Um, where we can preview the last season, but also kind of look forward now to the new campaign. Uh, the transfer window's open. The fixture lists have been revealed. Shirts are starting to come out, etc., etc., etc. And I just kind of wanted to give you my my thoughts, my point of view of where I currently stand with Arsenal. Um, I was reading an article the other day. I think it was essentially what Arsenal's title odds were for next season. And I think we're, as a fan base, we've all got to the point where we no longer judge the Gunners on challenging for the Premier League or not. I think we've accepted that that's just not going to happen. But essentially, in the comments, one of the readers had read that um, he would be happy with six, that six next season would be acceptable, that it would be good enough to um, keep Mikel Arteta in his job. And it kind of hit me because increasingly... Um, whether I do videos or whether I write articles, I'm called negative. I've wrote for Just Arsenal for many years now, have been very popular um, among the site, have been given a lot of opportunities to meet people, to take part in competitions. And I always kind of thought I understood where this Dan's being negative came from because and if any of you are newer to the site I can send you links to prove this if you go back to the Arsene in and Arsene Wenger out movement um, I was very positive I was one of these who defended Arsene Wenger till the cows came home I I was one of these who predicted um the day he left, we would realise just what a great job he did, how difficult it was under the current ownership to, quote, only finish fourth and only win the odd FA Cup. Um, I can prove this. There were a lot of negative fans then, a lot of negative fans complaining about only finishing fourth, who now will... Um, say fifth is a success that fifth is progress who will now say that I'm negative and listen it, it doesn't it doesn't take common sense to to know why that is um, some people see themselves as more important than the football club um, so some people see that their opinion and not wanting to say they were wrong is bigger than what's best for Arsenal you know me for example um, all throughout this season said Arsenal would mentally choke that we didn't have the leadership to finish in the top four Um, and then I held my hands up and I said but if we do I will be the first to hold my hands up and say I was wrong we do not have fans on this channel who will hold their hands up and say look Since Arsene Wenger left, the grass hasn't been greener. Um, We have regressed. I'm not willing to hold my hands up. So what I'll do is I'll just call the likes of Dan negative. And then when the likes of me or the likes of Ken or others try to have a constructive football and opinion, you get shot down. People get personal, etc, etc, etc. But if you go back to that divide between those who wanted Arsene Wenger in and those who wanted Arsene Wenger out, at least you knew that the majority all wanted what was best for Arsenal. I My argument was we needed Arsene Wenger because he was the last person who properly loved Arsenal and was almost like the shield for the Karonki family. Others generally thought that Wenger was the only person, the only person holding us back. Um, And you could have that debate and you could have that argument. But 
where there seems to be a divide in our fan base, not necessarily when you go to the Emirates, because that was one of the positives of the last year, that fans realised these young group of players need help and they need that 12th man and it's not beneficial to be having anxiety around the stadium if it's nil-nil after 60 minutes. But increasingly within the fan base, I'm sensing that divide returning. And it's not just on just Arsenal. It's not, you know, it's throughout YouTube. It's pundits. Um, A general divide in what is now success for Arsenal. What should we be aiming for? What what is achievable? What is okay for the likes of me to go, no, I'm not happy with that. Um, From... A business point of view, I find it amazing and credible to the Kroenke family that they have managed to take a fan base who used to complain about only finishing fourth, no longer challenging for the title, have created the worst Arsenal squad in quarter of a century factually, and now have fans saying that six would be progress. Um, You have fans now debating that fifth is progress. Go ask a Manchester United fan if fifth next season would be progress. Go ask a Chelsea fan if fifth would would be progress. And these are the teams we are meant to be competing with. We were told when we left Highbury that, well, before now, like years before now, we would be competing with the likes of Bayern Munich. The Karanku family not just have lied to us, but they have managed to get their customers, their fans, a lot of fans, to believe that fifth is now acceptable. That sixth next season would be acceptable. And then it dawns on me. It dawns on me that I'm not negative. I'm actually one of the most positive fans on here. Because I want the very best for Arsenal. I want Arsenal to be the best version of themselves. That's not to say Arsenal have to win the Premier League. That's not to say Arsenal have to be even in the Champions League. But it's but it's just to see Arsenal give it their very best to be the best versions of themselves. In January, we were slashing the wage bill. In January, we gave away our best striker without a replacement. We just gave him away. And I was called negative for saying the priority was to slash the wage bill, but it was factual. I was called negative in January, February, March, April, May. And then suddenly, the same fans who were calling me negative, saying that I had an agenda, were almost like, oh, if only we had a striker, if only we weren't relying on Lacazette and Eddie Nketiah. I can't fathom. I can't fathom how... A, the Kronkic family have been able to manipulate their customers into thinking this. But I can't... I can't understand how fans weren't more up in arms about this. Eddie Nketiah is not good enough. He wouldn't get a game at Man City. He wouldn't get a game at Liverpool. He wouldn't get a game at Chelsea. He wouldn't get a game at Man United. He wouldn't get a game at Tottenham. He wouldn't get a game in the first top 10, the first half of last year's Premier League. Um, And yet we're giving him £100,000 a week. We're going to give him the iconic number 14 shirt. What is wrong with me going, I want more than that. I want better than that. That I see through, I I see through Arsenal. I I see through what they're doing. It's cheaper to give Eddie Nketa a new contract than it is to go and get a proper proven striker. You know, I I, I, I see, um, you know, Porto confirming that, yeah, a deal has been agreed with Vieira and Vieira's now having a medical and... Suddenly, every gooner in the world is pretending that they knew who this guy was two weeks ago when they didn't. And that's not to say he won't come in 
And that's not to say he won't turn out to be a good player. But the evidence was in front of us last season that, yeah, it's great. We've got good youngsters. Yeah, great. We've got players who could be good for the future. But there's brutal evidence, brutal evidence that what this squad needs now is established players who know the Premier League, who will come in from day one in August and make us better. So what have we done? We've carried on getting players who jam tomorrow, who in a couple of years could be good, in a couple of years could be great. Oh, the future could be great for Arsenal. If only you wait a couple more years. And I'll say it now. This is what will happen. Those players will come in. They'll have some good games. And we'll get carried away as a fan base. And we'll sit here next year arguing this fifth or sixth progress. And we'll be talking about how we need leaders and experience. And then we'll go get some more young players and some more young players. And the likes of me might suggest, hey, hey, what if, what if the Karonki family... Oh, let's whisper it quietly. What if they only got um, Vieira because he was cheaper than Tillemans? Maybe. What if we only got Marquinhos because he was six million? Maybe. And oh, you're being negative, Dan. You're being negative. No, you're being negative. You're being negative because if you look, when the Karonki family first came on the board, this has happened time and time again. Who do we replace Cesc Fabregas with? Ben Ayun, Mikel Arteta. Who did we replace Nasri with? Ben Ayun, Mikel Arteta. Who did we replace Robin Van Persie with? Podolski. You know, Robin Van Persie sat there and said the the reason he left was because he didn't agree with the ambition this club shown. Was he just a negative person? Cesc Fabregas has gone on record saying his preference after Barcelona was to return to Arsenal, the club took the cheap option because we got Wilshire, we had Ramsey, even though we knew they were injury prone. Under the Karonki Empire, Adebayor, Nasri, Sagna, Clichy, Van Persie, etc., 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 all moving to bigger clubs. But that's okay. When we paid, when we paid the stadium off, we could return to our previous levels. Ramsey ran his contract down. That's okay. That will never be allowed to happen again. That was Wenger's fault. Sanchez ran his contract down. Ozil ran his contract down. We pay players to rip up their contracts just to save some money on the wage bill. Someone had the nerve the other day, the nerve the other day to go, my generation of a lack of patience... That I want it now. It's nearly been two decades. Nearly been two decades. Since we won the Premier League. In those two decades. Honestly how many times do we actually challenge for the Premier League. Maybe three or four. And that's being kind. And I'm not even sitting here. I'm not even sitting here saying. We need to win the Premier League. But I'm saying. oh, Maybe. Maybe we should not just be happy for a fifth, especially when some of you who call me negative are the ones who used to give Wenger the hardest time possible. The hardest time possible for only finishing fourth. You know, I feel sometimes a little bit tricked because I love writing and some of you are very complimentary about my writing. But unfortunately, I love Arsenal. So I unfortunately am in a period of time where I'm writing about a topic that is failing. So it's very hard to be positive. And I'm not just going to be positive just for the sake of positivity. You know, if I was writing about Manchester City and complaining about Jack Grealish, for example, that is negativity. If I was saying Jurgen Klopp should be sacked 
because he only won two trophies. That's being negative. If Arsenal had challenged for the title but fallen away in February and March, that's being negative. You know, a manager coming in, finishing 8th, 8th and 5th, when we abused Arsene Wenger for higher positions... That's not being negative. I like Mikel Arteta. I met Mikel Arteta. I like the way he talks. But he has failed to meet his objective. When he, you know, go back to his first press conference. Go back to every time Josh Karanke speaks. They're telling us. They're telling you. Don't be happy with this. That the bare minimum is we should be in the Champions League. And that's what a club our size should accept. So... It's not me being negative. It's you guys. Anyone who thinks that fifth is acceptable for Arsenal Football Club, they're the negative ones. Anyone who's suggesting that six would be okay next season are the negative ones. Because what those fans will do is is once six becomes acceptable, then seventh will become acceptable, then eighth will become acceptable. And the Kronky family just carry on taking your money and taking your money and taking your money. Right? In life, as well as sport, be the best version of yourself you can be. Yeah, Don't accept anything less. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. You know, I remember, I remember last season, we lost 3-0 to Crystal Palace. And I was called negative for just being critical. Being critical that we lost 3-0 to Crystal Palace. Ah, oh, damn, be positive. If we win every game from now to the end of the season, we'll still finish in the top four. But that's the only thing that mattered. You know, it wasn't even about Arsenal not finishing fourth. It was those performances at Newcastle, those performances at Tottenham. You know, that's not someone being negative. Anybody defending that is being negative. Anybody who's blaming injuries or COVID or... I I read one the other day. The fixture list at the start of the season was unfair on us. You know... It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. We have to say enough. I'm not sitting here saying our tets are out. I'm I'm saying we won't win anything under the Cronky family. Um, but if I'm being proven right every season, every season, every season, you know, at what point do you go, well, why is that? And is it generally because he doesn't love Arsenal? You know, somebody who writes on that site nearly every day, somebody who goes to the Emirates... Right? Somebody who's got a post of Thierry Henry up, a canvas of Thierry up in his kitchen. I, I, I don't love Arsenal. I, I, I'm just negative. Or no, or is it because I want the very best for Arsenal? And I've accepted we're not going to win the title under the Corongi family. But I'm not going to start to say fifth is okay. And I guess that's almost just like for forewarning people for the new season. I see what Arsenal are doing in the transfer window. I I see what some of you fans are doing. I I would never be personal and I would never personally punk anyone out. But I know. I know the fans who have been consistent all the way through. And I know the fans and I've been sad enough to even go back and look. I know fans who call me negative for not being happy with fifth, who criticise Arsene Wenger when he finished second in the season Leicester won it. Just just think about that. Just think about that. I know fans who a few years ago would have not been happy with the Vieira signing, who would not have been happy with the Marquinhos signing, who 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 would have gone, no, we want established people. And to me, you guys have got your own agendas because you would rather not say you were wrong about something than give an opinion that is for the very best of Arsenal Football Club. Um, So if you read my articles, which so many of you do, and I appreciate it, um, guess what? If we lose lose 3-0 to Crystal Palace on the opening game of the season I will be critical um, if we 
yet again in January, slash the wage bill and get rid of our best players, I will be critical. If we don't challenge for the top four, finish in the top four, I will be critical. If we go out the first round of the FA Cup because we can't be bothered, I will be critical. Um, because I want the very best for Arsenal. Um, and have a debate with me. Have a constructive footballing debate with me. Um, some of you who just read my articles and then comment <laughs> and then say it's like a negative article, but you read it. Again, I can't fathom it. You're like, you're, but then you, but then you're the same people who get manipulated by Stan Kroenke every week. Um, just think about that. If you don't, if you didn't like to read something, you wouldn't read it, would you? Um, let alone comment on it. You know, there's 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 sports journalists and people who I can't stand, so I don't go and read their work. I certainly don't go and uh, comment on it. Just saying. So. Hope you're having a good summer, guys. Um, and let me know. Let me know. Um, is it actually negative to say that Arsenal Football Club should be in the top four? Is it negative to say that we should be buying established, proven players? Is it negative to say that, you know, losing 11 games, losing 3-0 to Palace, losing 3-0 uh, to Tottenham, losing at Newcastle, the amount of those performances... Is that someone being negative? Um, and finally, let's see if we've got some gumption. Let's see if we've got some guts. You know, let's see, because I know who you are. If you verbally abuse the greatest manager in our history, and if you want Wenger out because only finishing fourth wasn't good enough, why now is fifth? And let's just see how many of you can actually make a constructive footballing debate anything personal i'm not going to message back i'm um you know but i'll happily have a constructive footballing debate with you but um you know if you're going to get personal it just proves you've got no knowledge and i already know a lot of you have no knowledge because you can't answer that question again listen to the question if you were negative when arsenal were finishing fourth under arsene wenger why are you now positive after eighth eighth and fifth take it easy peeps speak to you later